We have talked about how to do consolidation in the year of acquisition under the three methods. Uh, now let's do a brief comparison. So first, let's compare the three methods on the parents' book. Um, here, these three columns are the three under the three methods how the parent book will look like. And as you can see here, almost every row are exactly the same except uh, two rows here. One is equity and subsidiary earnings. Uh, and then for the initial value method, we have dividend income here. And then this will cause the difference in your net income. And of course, it will also be carried over to cause a difference in your ending return earning. And then another major difference is here for the investment account. Your investment account balances will be very different. And then uh, this will cause a difference in the total asset of the firm. Um, and then of course your ending return earning is carried over to a balance sheet. So those numbers will be different as well. So this is a comparison on the parents book. And now let's look at uh, on the consolidation worksheet, what are the differences? So entry S, A, E are the same for all of the three methods. Three methods will arrive at the same consolidated totals. Let me just go through it now and then we're going to go back to the worksheet and take a look. If the parent used the equity method, the net income and shareholders equity account on the parent book will reflect the consolidated total versus if the parent has been using the other method, it won't. So let's uh, now look again at the consolidation worksheet just we just, that we just did. So first of all, cons consolidation entries S, A, and E, E, those entries, if you compare among the three methods, those entries are exactly the same. So first of all, consolidation entry S, A, and E. Those three entries are exactly the same under the three methods. And then if you compare the last column, the last column here in, the, in your first page, which is when the parent used the equity method, versus the last column here on the second page, which is when the parent uses the initial value method, versus the last column here on the third page, which is when the parent uses the partial equity method. Can you tell me what you, are, what you find? Yeah, so those three columns are exactly the same. So which just means that no matter which internal method the parent is using to make its own book, it wouldn't affect the consolidated total numbers investors are going to see. So which means just means that which uh, for investors, which internal method the parent use, no matter it's the equity method, the initial value method or the partial equity method, it doesn't matter for investors because they're going to say the same thing. They're going to say the same consolidated total numbers. Uh, and then also, as we mentioned before, so it is only under the equity method, you are going to say the parent book kind of uh, have some kind of representation it actually has compared with the other two methods. Under the equity method, the parent book will have more representation of the consolidated total numbers. You are going to say the parent's net income will be exactly the same as the consolidated uh, total net income and return earning will be exactly the same as consolidated total return earning. Uh, so those are what you are only going to say if the parent has been using the equity method. So uh, up to now, we have talked about how to do consolidation in the year of acquisition. Uh, and then we're going to talk, take a look at how to do consolidation subsequent to the year of acquisition.